Now we're going to talk about inscribed angles. Remember that if you have a circle and you have a central angle, that's an angle that has its vertex at the center of the circle. And with these central angles, we can talk about the arc length, or we can talk about the arc measure in terms of that central angle. So for example, if, uh, if you have a central angle of, let's say, 80 degrees, then the measure of the inscribed arc, in this case AB, is going to be 80 degrees. That's the way we talk about the uh, measure of the arc. Now, that's a central angle. Now, let's suppose that we have not a central angle, but a, an inscribed angle. Now, that's an angle where you don't, the vertex is not at the center, it's on the circle. So, for example, in this case, the uh, inscribed angle would be D, this angle ADB. And we have the vertex here being on the circle, and then there are these two cords that go up and intercept an arc. Now, what we want to do is we want to talk about, okay, well, what is the measure of that angle? Well, the measure of that angle, ADB in this case, is going to be one half of the inscribed arc. So in this case, it would be 40 degrees. Now, let, let's see how, how we would use that. Let's suppose we've got a circle. We have an inscribed angle, ADB here, and you have the arc is 60 degrees. So you can talk about the angle, measure of angle ADB as being 30 degrees. Okay? Okay, so let's, let's, so what we see here is we see a connection between an inscribed angle and the measure of the arc that's in. in um, intercept it. Okay. So let's look at some examples here. In this first one, we want to find the um, measure of the blue arc. Well, we know that this back here is 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. And we know that that's one half of the intercepted arc. So, th so this intercepted arc, the measure uh, this arc, whoops, the measure of the arc, STQ, is going to equal 180. Okay. Now, uh, for this next one, we've got that the um, inscribed angle is 115 degrees. So the arc, the, the measure of this arc, ZWX, is going to be twice that. So it's going to be 330. Yeah, that's how we do it. Now on this one over here, we want this time, um, we want to find the angle. Okay, So we want to find the, the measure of angle in MP. Well, it's going to be half of the 100, so it's going to be 50 degrees. Yeah, so that's the relationship with the inscribed angles and the uh, measure of the arc, intercepted arc. Now, if, if you have two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are going to be congruent. So, you know, that's, that's something that makes sense. So, for example, this angle here is 75 degrees, and notice it intercepts this arc. Well, this angle right here, this with the vertex F, it intercepts the same arc. So it's going to be 75 degrees as well, okay? Because it, it intercepts the same arc. Okay, now let's, let's uh, mosey along. Let's suppose, let's look at some polygons that are inscribed inside a circle. So when we talk about a polygon being inscribed inside of a circle, we're thinking that each of the vert vertices, all the, the, ver the vertices of the polygon, it, 
They're going to be on the circle. And we talk about that polygon being inscribed in the circle and the circle circumscribing the polygon. So in this case, uh, you've got a couple of examples here. This circle here circumscribes this inscribed triangle. Okay. Down here, we've got the circle that's uh, circumscribing this uh, inscribed polygon. And notice that the vertices are all on the circle. Now, a couple of things we want to take note of. If you inscribe a right triangle inside a circle, then what happens is the diameter of that uh, triangle is going to be, or the hypotenuse is going to be the diameter of the circle. And it goes the other way. If, you, uh, if one side of an inscribed triangle is a diameter of the circle, then the triangle is a right triangle, okay? And the angle opposite the diameter is a right angle, okay? So, so that's one of the things we want to take note of, and we'll see how we can use that in a minute. Now, if you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, as you see here, uh, notice we have a quadrilateral inscribed in, then the opposite angles are going to be supplementary, okay? So these angles are going to be supplementary. So in this case, the measure of angle E, that inscribed angle E, is going um, plus the inscribed angle G, those angles are going to be 180. See? So it says, so, see? The measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G, 180. The measure of angle D plus the measure of angle F, notice the angles right across from each other, opposite angles, are going to be supplementary when you inscribe a quadrilateral. Okay, so let's, let's look at a couple of examples of how we could use this. Here we've got a, this first one, A, we've got a triangle inscribed inside a circle. And not only that, we notice that the hypotenuse of this triangle is the diameter. That tells us that 2x is equal to, whoops, 2x is equal to 90. That means that x is equal to 45. Okay. Yeah. So x is equal to 45. Now notice the, the intercepted arc up here is 180, and this is half of that. So it's 90, and then if you solve for x, you get 45. Okay? Now, let's look at this other one. Now we've got a quadrilateral inscribed inside a circle. So we know this. We know that z plus 80 has got to equal 180. That means that z is equal to 100. Likewise, y plus 120 has to equal 180. That means that y is equal to 60. Okay, so that's just a straightforward application of those two theorems because these are complementary and these are complementary. Uh, not complementary, supplementary. Have I been saying complementary? <laughs> They're supplementary. Okay, they add up to 180. I hope I haven't been saying complementary. I don't know why that happens. Okay, now let's, let's look at another example. So we want to find x and y. So here we go. We've got 5x plus 2y equals 180. And we also have 3x plus 3y equals 180. So what we have to do now is we just need to solve this um, system of equations. And I think the way I want to solve this is maybe with uh, elimination. Let me, let me just take this uh, top equation and multiply by 3. And I get 15x plus 6y equals 3 times 180. I'll do that. And the bottom one, I'll take... 
a negative two and multiply. So I get a negative six X minus six Y equals negative two times 180. Yeah, there we go. Now if I add those, let's see what I get. I get nine X equals uh, 180. Yeah, see? Three times 180 and I take away two times 180, I get one times 180. And then if I divide by nine, I get 180 divided by nine, and I guess that would be 20. Okay, then we can go back, since we've got the 20, I can go back and find y because five times 20 plus two y equals 180. So I can, I can just go back anywhere I have uh, an x and a y together, plug in the 20 for the x, and let's see what I get. I get 2y is equal to 180 minus 100. That is going to be 80. And then y is equal to 40. Yeah, so 40. And there we have it.